The Earth System, a video series for educational institutions for free use presented by the German Geological Society, the DGGV. Hello everyone. I welcome the viewers of another episode of my video series on the Earth System. In this video, I would like to look at different types of transform faults. There are not only those between two segments of a mid-oceanic ridge, which I discussed in detail in the previous chapter to show the principle of transform faults. There are also transform faults between different types of plate boundaries, and that is what we are talking about here. Just to repeat, a transform fault always runs exactly from a transformation point to a transformation point and not beyond. The continuation of the transform fault, which is often clearly visible, in particular in the morphology of the seafloor, is the fracture zone, where the plates move in the same direction and, therefore, this is no longer a transform fault. Now, of course, transform faults do not only exist between two ridge segments, as we find in large numbers in the mid-oceanic ridge systems, but also when there are different plate boundaries. For example, a mid-oceanic ridge on the one side and the subduction zones on the other side. I begin with two examples of a transform fault between a mid-oceanic ridge and a subduction zone. In contrast to the ridge-to-ridge -ridge transform fault, such a transform fault is only rarely stable in length. It's quite different. The length of the transform fault changes, as I will show in a minute. Above you can see how the transform fault becomes longer due to the plate movement. Below it is shortened. This depends on the direction of subduction in the subduction zone. This is what we call the polarity of a subduction zone. Above, the plate shown in light blue color is subducted under the greenish one. Below, it's the other way around. Let's have a look how the transform fault becomes longer or shorter. Above, the greenish plate becomes larger due to the formation of no new oceanic crust at the mid-oceanic ridge, but nothing is taken away from it in the subduction zone. This is different below because the greenish plate subducts below the blue one, which is why the transform fault is shortened. Let us note that with different plate boundaries at the ends of, the tr of a transform fault, the length of a transform fault mostly increases or shortens, depending on the polarity of the subduction zone. An example for the shortening of a transform fault is quite well exposed in the Mendocino transform fault between the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate. About 40 million years ago, the Juan de Fuca plate was part of the Farallon plate. This was, at that time, a larger plate, which also included what is now known as the Cocos plate and the Nazca plate further south. The Mendocino transform fault was a normal ridge-to-ridge -ridge transform fault at that time. However, the Farallon plate continued to subduct beneath North America and about 30 to 35 million years ago the Mendocino transform fault then reached the subduction zone so that the ridge-ridge transform fault became a ridge subduction tra zone transform fault. And since then the Mendocino transform fault has been getting shorter and shorter and the Juan de Fuca plate has been getting smaller and smaller. Next, let's look at transform faults between two subduction zones. There are three ways in which transform faults can develop here. We are either dealing with opposing subduction zones, which can lead to shortening or an increase in length. This depends on the respective plate movement velocities. However, if both subduction zones move in the same direction and subduct at the same rate, the transform fault will maintain its length. In this animation, the situation with two subduction zones in the same direction is shown in the middle. Here, the transform fault remains constant for subduction zones in the opposite directions. Depending on the direction of subduction, 
the transform fold will either shorten, as in the example on the left, or increase in length, as can see, be seen on the right. So we can observe here also that it depends on the subduction velocity and, above all, its polarity, where whether there is a shortening or an increase in length at the transform fault. A nice example of a transform fault connecting two subduction zones can be found in New Zealand. In northern New Zealand is the Hikurangi Trough, where the Pacific Plate is subducted beneath the Indo-Australian Plate. South of New Zealand it is the other way around, where the Indo-Australian plate is subducted under the Pacific plate. And between the two subduction zones lies the Alpine Transform Fault Zone. This is named after the New Zealand Alps. In the current constellation, the Alpine Transform Fault will probably become longer. Such a situation in which the direction of subduction is reversed over a relatively short distance is called a subduction flip. Most transform faults are found between segments of mid-oceanic ridges. However, sometimes there are situations where transform faults cut through continental crust, which can then also be studied on land. I would like to briefly address two well-known examples of continental transform faults. First, the famous San Andreas Fault in North America and on the other hand, the North Anatolian Fault in Turkey and the East Anatolian Fault, where a very severe earthquake occurred in February 2023, is also a transform fault. First, let's look at the San Andreas Fault. Most people have probably seen pictures of the San Andreas Fault like this bird's eye view. Since it runs through desert-like zones over large parts, the structures created by the lateral movement can often be seen very clearly in the landscape. The San Andreas Fault extends from the subduction zone in the north down to Palm Springs in Southern California. In the north, there is a triple junction between the two transform faults. These are the Mendocino Fault, which was just mentioned, and the San Andreas Fault, and a subduction zone, that's the Cascadia subduction zone, which is also known for repeated volcanic eruptions, such as, for instance, Mount St. Helens in 1980. I will discuss triple junctions later in a separate chapter. To the south, the San Andreas Fault turns into a series of spreading zones and smaller transform faults that extend throughout the Gulf of California. 40 million years ago, there was a, still a subduction zone along the coast in this area, but this convergent plate margin disappeared due to the collision with the mid-oceanic ridge between the Farallon Plate and the Pacific Plate, because this also fundamentally changed the direction of plate movement in this zone. The convergent movement in the subduction zone became a lateral movement as is typical in transform faults. Another example of a recurrently active transform fault in continental crust is the North Anatolian Fault in Turkey between the European and Anatolian plates. Severe earthquakes occur regularly in this fault zone, most recently in 1999 with a severe earthquake in the Izmit region. However, the already mentioned severe earthquake in Turkey in spring 2023 does not belong to this fault zone, but to the East Anatolian fault zone, which also represents a transform fault and which meets the North Anatolian fault in the east of Turkey. Okay, so far the different types of transform faults. In the next chapter, I will discuss geometric relationships in plate tectonics, particularly how plate movements can be described on a sphere. This time, thank you for listening and I'll be happy if you stick around. I recommend continue with the e-video on plate motion and rotations on a sphere.